a couple of tidbits of information for you. Let me pull up my stats so I get them all right. Bob told me this morning that we sold 70 pounds of candy yesterday, which is just amazing. Uh, <clears throat> I received word that we served a record-breaking 419 people at our soup supper last night, and we received $1,891 in donations. And all of that, all of the money that was raised yesterday goes towards missions in some form, whether it's through the youth group or through our hardworking missions committee. All of that generosity that was outpoured through you is going to go to impact ministry around the world. And so thank you. Thank you, and I hope you had a good time helping us to raise those funds. I know we had fun uh, working and, and doing all that stuff, so thank you. You should give yourselves a hand for all your hard work. <laughs> and we look forward to our schedule as it continues. We turn towards uh, the calendar. You can see our events here in red. And I just want to uh, remind all of you about our Christmas Eve schedule. I know it, Christmas Eve is at the end of this month, but it, it's like three weeks. I mean, it's coming up really, really fast. And so we will have one service, 930 in the morning. Christmas Eve is on a Sunday this year. And then we will have our normal evening services, I think 530 and 11 are the times, if I'm remembering off the top of my head, <clears throat> 930 a.m., and 11 p.m. will be the exact same service. They will feature the choir, we will do the candlelight, we will sing joy to the world. All of those elements will be present in both of those services. And so if, if you are a person who has been unable to join us because you don't like driving at night, or if you just really want to come during the daytime, we encourage you to come to the 930 service. We're excited to be able to offer this opportunity this year. And then the 530 service will feature the Refuge Praise Band and other special singers, and we will be doing a service of nine lessons and carols. So it's quite a bit different service, but we'll also be singing Silent Night and Joy to the World in that service. So that is where we're headed towards the end of this month. And then on December 31st, we also have only one service at 930, and that's our Wesleyan. It's a covenant service in the Wesleyan tradition the words of which you can find printed in our December newsletter. So I hope you'll take time to pray over those and consider those and consider coming um, and covenanting with us to start off 2018. Now, beloved, will you please stand and join together and share in a time of peace and greeting with one another. Join me in a time of prayer. <clears throat> Gracious and loving God, as we gather together as your people, 
as a small portion of the body of Christ here on earth. We ask for your Holy Spirit to move in this place, to fill each and every one of us up, to open up our hearts and minds, to learn more about you, to fall more and deep, more deeply in love with you, and to draw closer together as a community. Help this be a time that not only blesses us, God, but above all, blesses you and praises your holy name. It's in your son's mighty name that we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship. And then verse 5 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel on page 211 in the United Methodist Hymnal. And once again, you begin with me on the call to worship. Key of David, David and, and scepter, scepter of, of the house of Israel. Israel. Who opens and no one shuts. Who shuts and no one opens. Come, Come and bring forth from prison 
the captive who sits in darkness and in the shadow of death. We light our first Advent candle to symbolize the hope of the arrival of the, of the arrival of Je that Jesus brings. Remain standing and join in singing our opening song, People Look East, number 202 in the United Methodist Hymnal. People look east, the time is near.
Please join me in our prayer for illumination. You can find it in your bulletin. We gather in preparation. For good news is about to be proclaimed. We gather in expectation. For joy is about to break forth in our midst. We gather in celebration. For we are those people who have said yes to the manger. Yes to the one incarnate for others. Yes, to the wholeness of God. In preparation and expectation, let us celebrate. You can find the scripture reading, Isaiah 40, 1 through 11, on page 581 in your pew Bible. Page 581. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us stand now and join together in singing Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, found in our hymnals on page 196. Thank you. 
be seated. I want to invite you to take a moment and to think about things you prepare for. What do you get ready for in your lives? This weekend, here in this church and in this town, was Christmas past. And I want you to just, I want us all to just take a second and think of all the preparations that went into just this weekend. Now, uh, Mike Colbert and Amy Colbert are, are kind of data people, so all I have a lot of data on is the soup supper, and I want to share it with you. 49 church families contributed to the soup supper, either through donating ingredients or volunteering time. 25 adults helped 32 students prepare, cook, and serve soup. 56 volunteers represent 22 different families, and most worked multiple shifts. Five people worked every minute of every shift. There were 13 middle school students and 18 high school volunteers. From the first potato peel to the last dish washed, soup supper took 27 hours. We made 252 quarts of soup, which is about 672 bowls. Can you tell they really like the math? <laughs> and I deleted half of it. No. <laughs> And all of that preparation was just for the two hours of soup serving. This does not include the hours of candy making, the volunteers that came and set up and decorated the tables and stayed there this, that Saturday morning and all through soup supper to sell the candy. It doesn't include the hours of recruiting volunteers for the live nativity or that beautiful tent that was set up and, and the elaborate lighting and the people who sat out in the cold. It doesn't include the hours of decorating our church, of putting up Christmas trees and greens and Advent wreaths. All of that preparation for one weekend. What does preparation do to us mentally and emotionally? I don't know about you, but I was in denial about Christmas until we set up the Christmas tree in our house. And I have a hard and fast rule that the Christmas tree cannot go up till after Thanksgiving. And so the Sunday after Thanksgiving, at the insistence of my daughter, the Christmas tree went up. <laughs> and she has been dancing and singing about the holiday ever since. And so I finally find myself with Christmas tree up in my house thinking, oh, I should get ready. Because that's what preparation does. Preparation turns us toward an event, turns us toward a person, a moment in time, helps us to feel ready. I want to share with you a gospel reading for today. You are free to remain seated. This is from the gospel according to Mark chapter 1 verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now, I, just one moment of clarification. I fall into this trap, too. This is the lectionary reading for this Sunday. And I grew up hearing the lectionary, and I assumed John the Baptist was doing his ministry before Jesus was born. But if you read the scripture, John the Baptist is six months older than Jesus. 
So this is actually fast forwarding a little bit, but what John is doing and why this scripture is here now in the Advent reading is John is preparing the people for the Messiah to show up. Now, yesterday, Mike Colbert had this phrase he kept using, Friday and yesterday. He kept saying, if you just remove the barriers in front of them, they will do amazing things. He was saying it in reference to there was this really wonderful moment. I don't know if you know this, but the last two years, they've left me in charge of decorating for soup supper. I don't know how I got that job. It is not my gift. And so I came in yesterday prepared to decorate for soup supper, and it was done by middle school and high school students. I walked into a decorated room, and Mike's response to me was, if you remove the barriers from in front of them, they will do amazing things. And that is exactly what John the Baptist is doing in his ministry. That is exactly what the prophet Isaiah is talking about. It needs to, we need to remove the barriers and prepare the way into our hearts for the Messiah. We need to remove the barriers in front of other people so that they can get to Jesus. So here we are. We're in official Advent. It's actually Advent, not that crazy extended thing your pastor decided to do in November. Christmas is just around the corner. Christmas past is done. And so the question in front of us all is, how are we preparing? Beyond the decorations and the baking and the party planning, how are we preparing for Jesus? Are there barriers in the pathway to our heart for Jesus? Are there barriers in the pathway to Jesus keeping you from Jesus? What mountains and hills in our lives need to be brought low? Where does there need to be more humility and more submission? Where have we stubbornly held on to our preferences without allowing God to show us God's will? What valleys must be brought up? What practices could we do more of? Have we read our Bible daily? Have we prayed without ceasing? Are we singing with joy? And what are the rough places? Where are the places we create fiction, friction? Where are the places in us that hurt others? Is our first response to something to complain and tear it down? because it's not our way? Or is our first response loving and building up and seeing the joy? I wanna challenge us all, and it is a challenge, it's a true challenge. I wanna challenge each and every one of us to give as much time this season preparing for Jesus as we do any other Christmas preparation. Imagine that. Decorate for an hour, Work on something in your heart for an hour. While your cookies are baking, open up your Bible. It's a massive addition to your to-do list. I recognize this absolutely, and I make no apologies for it. It's a massive addition to my to-do list, too. But I really believe that the work we would do now, the bringing down of mountains and hills, the lifting up of valleys, the smoothing of the rough places, is what makes the rest of it manageable. And honestly, it's not what makes, not just manageable, but it makes the rest of the work joyful. And imagine this too, not only joyful, it makes the rest of the work peaceful. How many of you would love peace during this time of year, right? The peace that passes understanding. And so it could all be chaos around you. The cookies could be burning and the cat could have eaten all the tinsel. And you could be at peace because you've done the work. Now luckily we're not alone in this work in our hearts. Much like John the Baptist was sent by God to prepare the Israelites for the coming of the Messiah. God has sent his Holy Spirit to us. 
The Holy Spirit is available to guide and direct each and every one of us to show us our mountains and our hills and our valleys and our rough places. And not only that, but we're here together to do the work. We've been learning throughout this crazy extended Advent about Jesus being king, God being king. And we've learned that this king is a shepherd, <coughs> that this king has expectations, that this king comes and judges, but maybe not in a way that we expected. But one of the most important things we have to learn as we prepare our hearts to receive this king, to receive Jesus incarnate, is that this baby that we celebrate today, this Messiah, this king, this great one, is also the same one that hung on the cross. This is a king who is crucified, a king who <coughs> suffers, a king who dies on behalf of and out of love of for the king's people. And so we willingly enter into this challenge of preparing our hearts because we have not known love like this from any other source. Love that even knowing the betrayal that was to come, even knowing the abandonment that was to come, this king took bread. And he gave thanks to his father. And he broke the bread. And he looked at his friends and his followers and he said, this is my body given for you. Every time you eat it, remember me. And when the meal was over, he took the cup and again gave thanks to his father. And he gave it to his disciples and his followers and he said, this is my blood poured out for you. This is the cup of the new covenant. From now on, there are no barriers between you and God except those of your own choosing. Accept this cup and allow the mountains and hills to be brought low, the valleys to be lifted up, and the rough places made smooth. And as often as you drink it, remember me. Will you pray with me? God, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and unfermented wine that they would be for us the body and blood of Christ. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us, that we would be the body of Christ out in the world in ministry, and that we would be one. God, as we move through this season of Advent towards Christmas, Help us to boldly prepare for the arrival of your son, not only in celebration of his birth so long ago, but in preparation of his coming again. Allow our hearts and lives to be changed by the presence of your Holy Spirit. Help us to be born anew into the new year, that we may walk more faithfully as your disciples. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will those helping to serve please come forward?
All are welcome to the table. There is gluten free in the middle. You will be offered a piece of bread and invited to dip it in the cup and partake of both elements at once. You are free to kneel at the communion rails as you feel led by the Spirit or return to your seats by the side aisle. Come receive. The table is open for all. I want to invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 11. There's a prayer in bold after give the heading, Giving the Bread and Cup. It begins, Eternal God, if you will pray with me. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. 
Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come now to our time of prayer. Will you join me? Loving God, we begin by giving thanks that we have been here with our family in Christ, that we have been here in worship, that you sent your son so long ago for us. God, we confess to you those times when we have forgotten what this season is all about. When we have become so busy with the fun things, so busy with the beautiful things that that we have lost sight of the most beautiful gift of all. We ask not only for your forgiveness, but we ask that your Holy Spirit would work within our hearts and would show us how to prepare the way for your coming again. God, we have loved ones on our hearts that are hurting this morning. We have friends and family in our midst that are experiencing loss. And God, we recognize that this season is also a season when we remember those who have lost most keenly. And so we ask for your comfort and your presence and your love. God, we pray for our community, for our leaders. Please fill them with your wisdom and your compassion. God, I pray for this, your church, and the church universal that we would be about the work of preparing hearts to receive Jesus. I know that I cannot pray the prayer of all our hearts gathered here in this place. And so I ask now, God, that these hearts would be open to hear from you and to speak to you. confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. our time of offering and I would lift up that generosity is a way to be set free from the stress it seems weird but it's true uh, it's a way of saying that this that this world does not have power over us and so I would invite you to give as you feel led and I would invite you to the place of gener to free place of freedom that generosity brings Will the ushers please come forward to receive this morning's offering? prayer of dedication, you find it in your bulletin. Shall we pray? God of, God of Advent, Advent, of waiting, waiting and, and hoping, keep, keep our, our hearts, hearts expectant, ready, ready for your, your coming, coming among, among us. us. God, God of Christmas, of celebration and rejoicing, make our hearts glad with the joy nothing can take from us. us. God, God of, of epiphany, of hiding and, and making known, 
fill our hearts, our hearts with wonder at the revelation of your glory that we have seen in Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing and join in singing our closing hymn, number 219, What Child Is This?, found in your United Methodist hymnal. made smooth in the name of God the Father Jesus Christ the Son and the indwelling Holy Spirit amen. amen our closing chorus for this Advent and Christmas season is the chorus of go tell it on the mountain we're gonna sing it twice and this is our gentle reminder of your job this Christmas so go forth and proclaim the hope of Jesus Christ let us sing go tell it on the mountain go oh. 